at home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf Vex Moore, and we've got everything to keep you up to date with everything Rocket League. Today on the show, we're recapping the earlier part of the spring split for Season X in Grid Watch. We talk Rizzo in Double Tap, and of course, we've got all your memes and the things you guys have been making in Breakout. Now, we've been off air for a little while here, so there's some exciting news we need to talk about. That, of course, is mobile gaming. You never thought you'd hear that out of my mouth, did you? But Rocket League has announced that they are going 2D and they're going mobile with Sideswipe. Now, I'm a little upset that the name of this game isn't called Pocket League, but it does look super fun. Again, as I said, 2D side, not scroller, but 2D version of Rocket League where you can flip, reset, aerial, boost, do all the stuff that you're used to in Rocket League just a little bit easier. I'm gonna direct my teammates over to this because maybe they'll have the brain function to do that. I don't know. From what I've seen, maybe not even still. But I'm looking forward to trying it. You guys should too as that comes out later this year. But we're going to get you all caught up today now with Season X Spring Split in Gridwatch. <laughs> RLCS Season X Spring Split is already in full swing, with Europe already having completed two of their three regional events and North America finishing up its first, there's a lot to cover. A mix of returning champions, shocking upsets, and regional paradigm shifts that might give us a hint as to the direction of the upcoming majors. The first European regional was something of a victory lap for regional juggernauts Team BDS, who were fresh off of winning the winter major when they defended their crown with an undefeated upper bracket win. The most challenge faced by the Titanic trio in the inaugural spring event was their playoff semifinals against Giants Gaming. The tight set culminated in four consecutive overtimes, the last of which clocked in at nearly three minutes before BDS was able to clinch the win. BDS have been outstanding all weekend. I think they've been the best team all weekend, quite clearly. As you mentioned everyone, they got better this weekend. Yes. As terrifying as that is for every team out there. We've got all of our battles for top six, we can even have a bottle battle for top two, but there is only one team when yeah. it is top one. BDS are the best team in the European region. They will need to wait for us to eventually get to live events to prove just where they stand in the history of Rocket League. But for now, they are the man. Across the pond in North America, the first regional was a cavalcade of upsets and incredible reversals. The top three teams coming off of the winter split, NV, Space Station Gaming, and NRG, all failed to even make it to the semifinals, leaving an unexpected quartet of teams in the highest standing. Sonics knocked out NRG in a decisive 4-1 stomp, while NV was eliminated in an intense seesaw match against the Kansas City Pioneers that ended with an extended overtime. Cross that might be coming in. Turbo's far up here, but he's not going to make contact, and Memory's ready for the miss, and you have to stay ready for that miss when an attacker is stretching out for that touch like that. And Memory again, taking all no the touches way. he needs, and how about that for a winner? Memory with a huge performance seals it in Game 7. Rejoice for KCP! They have done it! But the true heroes of the event were Rogue. The team was already gathering some serious momentum heading into 2021, which resulted in a strong performance in the winter split. But they proved their mettle this time by winning their first regional of the season. Triumphing over competitors FaZe Clan and G2, another team on the rise as of late, Rogue closed out their tournament run with a 4-1 victory against KCP. Emery was doing his best here trying to keep it close, but the problem is he doesn't actually have the boost to really make the play that he's going for. Chips it a little high, only has 17, and First killer was camped on the wall already, punished. It's gotta feel good for Rogue. They took a win in the last split, and everyone said they gotta do it again for us to really have them in the top conversation here. Well, here they have done it again. Rogue regional champs here for the winter or for the spring split event number one. They'll take that one down, the best team in North America for this weekend. European Regional 2 was similarly exciting, as once again, the prospective champs were knocked out early. Team BDS suffered a surprise loss against top blokes in the playoff quarterfinals, removing the most major threat from the tournament. So unfortunate to be in that situation. He thought it was gonna roll in itself. Oh my goodness, I'm out of breath. Time to recover. 
No way. The bump. Is it going to bounce? No way. <laughs> Top Rope sling the stone and take down the Goliath of Europe. It was Casio. He got the bump on extra. The most tilting way to lose a series. Buzzer beater. It was now anyone's game and Team Queso rose to the challenge. The Spanish squad managed to survive elimination in the knockout bracket to bring home the gold, beating out top blokes and Solary in impressive sets. For a team, as you mentioned earlier on, that supposedly only have the word go as the strategy, that tactical timeout brought them right back into it. What it looked like, you know, it looked like Solary were figuring them out. Like it was finally their series where the more experienced veterans we're going to get themselves a regional win. And instead, wow. it's Team Queso. They've stopped playing. They know that they've done it. From unknown at the start of the season to unstoppable in regional two, Team Queso are your champions. With two months left in the spring split, there's still a lot of time for things to change, or continue changing, as it were. Will BDS reclaim their top dog status? Can Rogue ride their early momentum to big results? Stay tuned, because the competition is only going to get fiercer and fiercer. And now joining me on the line, caster extraordinaire Alex Rodriguez, aka known as Axel Toss. And dude, I just can't say your last name right. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks, man. Uh, good to hang out with you. And you're the caster extraordinaire, my friend. Always fun to to have some discourse with a fellow expert in the trade, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. Hey, I mean, I call you extraordinaire because you look back. At everything you've done, it's it's been uh, way more versatility than, than I've hit, that's for sure. And I, I want to talk to you about it. I want to uh, dive into the world of Rocket League and what your sights are now on what Rocket League's been up to. And more specifically off the bat, what you've been up to, what you've been doing over the past uh, few years. It's been a while since we caught up, so let's use this time on air to do exactly that. You know, you're, you're with Oxygen now, but, you know, leading up to that, can you just give me an insight into uh, what... Axel Toss's life has been in, in the world of esports and the world of your world. No live events have been happening, which has been tough for the whole industry. You know, uh, that's like the that's probably why I got into this whole thing anyway. Just being able to hang out at events with people like it's a, a simple thing. But, you know, we haven't had that. So there's the side of it that's psychological where, you know, I miss my friends. I miss you, Leaf. And then there's also the 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 work side of it where it's like, well, you're not you know that's 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 a drop in the bucket right now for a lot of uh people with as far as um you know the live event ecosystem it's just not there it's a lot of less profit for a lot of different companies and a lot of adjustments had to be made same same for us same for us broadcasters so you know dude i've been i've been visiting family i have a decent remote setup believe it or not um you know kind of uh, staggered visits to family to, uh, to be safe during the pandemic, like staying for a pretty long period of time, but I haven't seen much family uh, in a while, so I've been doing that. What have been some of the challenges for yourself as a uh, as a broadcaster, as a uh, commentator, to be doing this from home? You know, I, I know most of them, but we want to tell the audience but what it's been like to do this from home and why you think esports has still been on the rise given you know the just this global crisis well thankfully my start in all this was doing this right where i built a computer when i was in college i set up an internet in obs back in the day with justin.tv so that was my start into esports is doing my own productions at home so i think i think it's an element for a lot of people where you have this creative space and you're able to optimize it by setting it up nicely and being it being there all the time we're seeing a lot of really successful content creators do that so let's talk about um the grid uh how that kind of fits into the rlcs in itself and and just in the landscape of esports i want to get your perspective since you've seen a lot of different formats and crazy things over the years in esports what you think about you know this new season with the the circuit system with the regionals the majors the grid feeding wildcard and that there's so much rocket league uh do you think this is the ideal situation for for rocket league because we are seeing a lot of new teams be able to show their stuff uh through being a qualifying yeah um uh you know with anything i work on first of all i always want to be involved you know so some people saw me depart rlcs 
they're like, oh, like a lot of people are like, oh, why'd you leave? Or where'd you go? Blah, blah, blah. Um, at the end of the day, anything I work on, I'm, I'm usually always going to try to still be involved in some capacity. You know, that applies to StarCraft. My handle's Axel Toss, right? From Protoss, co Protoss comes from StarCraft. I would still do StarCraft things. I still play StarCraft. I still have a ton of friends in the StarCraft scene. Applies to Rocket League, so on and so forth. So um, me working with Oxygen, it, you know, it's a cool group of people. It's a cool team. And it's like, you know what? If I can use my stream and, and help out and, and cover it and, and be involved in some capacity, that's cool. I'll do it if I got time. Uh, I, I can do it. Um, that leads us into kind of the formatting and the RLCS, what's going on. As we said earlier, a lot of everyone's adjusting to what's going on, to the pandemic. It's never happened before. So all, all my props go to any org or league or tournament who's trying to retain the competitive integrity of what you're initially trying to do and trying to fit the time frame that works for everyone. Try to, you know, go with the flow, as they say. Uh, that being said, that's hard to do. And Psyonix will probably tell you that too. It's it's not easy to set up a global infrastructure for competitive teams during a pandemic when you want live events, you have to deal with ping, you have to deal with that inf internet infrastructure, so on and so forth. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Ooh, good 51. Another big touch high. Oh, there it is, the gimmick. Slots it, there it is. What a play. That's what I'm talking about, just beating him to the ball. Again, you even have Calm. He's upfield trying to cause some chaos. And he rotates back and a challenge backwards. The perfect touch off the ceiling. Whoever wins this. It's 101 points, oh. Demensa! Brace wow. for Demensa. And brace for impact. Team Queso are here to stay. Then racing back from the opposite corner, up to Squishy. Squishy! Oh! oh! That board, the redirect is good. NRG up by two. Justin slams this perfectly towards Squishy, and he reaches for it, finds the angle. Up, up high, Garrett. Did he get the flip reset? Ground pinch from Garrett. No. You had to hold your breath, Way. and he pulled it off. Look at that. Now, as always, hot shots is a constant reminder uh, that I got to hit up the Rocket League gym. I'm gonna boot it up right after this is done. But it's now time for breakout. So I'm hoping that you know there's some not good stuff in this i'm not sure how it is based off this first one here because first up treed posted this to reddit and then said i am very humble i hate it when people type that before a match is over but i don't know if I can be mad when you do it in the middle of a shot to pogo double tap. I'm not mad. Well played. Absolute disrespect, but well played. Let's move on, though, because a huge save saves Tuan Suns. That's a mouthful. Full potential. Hey, um... Producers, I thought this was supposed to be a bunch of bad plays and, and plays or fun things. Not things that continue to make me feel bad like hot shots. Stop it with the good plays. To be fair, a little bit over that, but still the same. Come on, we're moving on. Because up next, Frankie Holmes wants to show off their big brain. Honestly, that kind of looks like a Gibbs level play, and I really love the producer's note here for Gibbs if he hears this, but how big can your brain be if you're playing Rumble? Well said, producer. Anyways, our next one comes from Dusty Dojo, who takes uh, it to a who's who of Rocket League personalities.
You almost had me. Honestly, the only way I could tell it was fake was that the comms weren't just everyone saying sheesh the whole time. But that was honestly a, a really good. I like this. Let's have more of these and break it. This was that was creative. Well done, Dusty Dojo. I like it. Anyways, we got our last one. So finally, let's step away from the one-off great plays because I'm sick of it now and take a look at Ready user George Sin's progression that they've been making. They've been practicing flip resets two hours a day for 30 days straight. Let's take a look at that progress. Ladies and gentlemen, practice does, maybe not perfect, but it, it definitely makes you a lot better, clearly, as evidenced here. Get into training. Get those training packs. Start practicing, ladies and gentlemen. But let's move on now because Double Tap takes a look at a career of someone who's definitely put in a lot of practice. It's G2's Rizzo. The old saying goes, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And very few players exemplify that philosophy, one of them being Rizzo, who's overcome adversity time and time again to seize many hard-fought victories. We're going all the way, baby! Kicking off his professional Rocket League career in 2016 as part of Mocket Esports and A's roster, Rizzo saw some early success in weekly tournaments and other smaller events. When the first ever season of the RLCS was announced, Rizzo and co. knew that they wanted in on that action. But Rizzo's road to stardom wasn't without its potholes. Despite their best efforts, Mocket and A just barely missed the cut for season one in both qualifiers they attempted. Uh, the low five went up a little bit too late for that. He actually just straight up whiffed it, uh, which right. is very unlike him. This victory's pretty much... I mean, it's in the bag at this point. We can call on the dogs, put out the fire. We're gonna see Kings of Urban taking the series 4-1 at this point, even if there was some last minute heroics at this point. We have the clock zeroed out. That's gonna be it right there. By the time Season 2 rolled around, Rizzo was ready. Having reformed his team under the name Take 2, which would soon be rechristened to Take 3, the squad managed to clinch a spot in the RLCS Season 2 by winning a qualifier, taking down G2 Esports in the process in a strange bit of foreshadowing. Green easily gets it over the top of him, back up into the corner. 26 seconds in, Insolence is going to try and take a shot, but it goes wide. Over zero, Cronovi and Lucinio moving up as a unit. Up into the corner. Renovi going to try and set this one back out to midfield. Zane Jackie's there before any G2 player came in to take a shot. Oh no, over zero got bumped by Cronovi. Insolence takes a shot. It does it drop in. It does, and that's the series. That's it. That's take, it. Take two just took G2 and put them into the lower bracket. His team <laughs> names might be the death knee, but this is actually <laughs> insane. Take three performed well, making it all the way to the World Championship land, where they took fourth place after a respectable lower bracket run. In so a quick drip turnaround, but this might be it. Off the backboard, they can get another one. Marky with a shot, Cooks here with the pressure, and that's going to be a flip side tactics. We'll take out take three and move on in the bracket. They are able to continue on so promisingly. I have to give Take 3 so many props, able to do what they did, trying to be the North American heroes that we all wanted them to be over <laughs> in the other region. They fought valiantly, but flip side tactics seem to be just playing consistent and hard and they will move on. This win caught the attention of G2, who signed him and JNAPS the following season. Though it took a few seasons for the new team to find their footing, before too long Rizzo and G2 were taking North America by storm, taking first place in Season 5's absolutely stacked North American Regional. And with 10 seconds remaining, Fireburner's oh touch no! goes above the goal. Can Rizzo get there in time? He does! He puts it in with 7 seconds left. G2 has the lead. Not a single mistake. Mistake all game and Fireburner 
just misreading that. Passes in front of his own net with seven seconds left. What do they do? What do they do with these seven seconds? Is it a fake kickoff from NRG? How do they approach this kickoff? It all comes down to this. They have to get ball control. They've got it into the orange. A good touch by Justin. You see them all lurking there. Justin to move in. He's burned all the time off the clock. It's up. JNAPS clears it away. This should be game if Kronovi can just put it on the ground. It goes down. G2 will be their first time here. Though they struggled to stand out in the season's five and six finals, despite their consistently excellent performance in the majors, G2's moment to shine arrived in season seven, where they made it all the way to the semifinals of the world land, only to fall short thanks to some clutch last minute plays from Renault Vitality. Cherry Peak trying to take that away. A double demo from Jaina. Chicago now racing around the corner. Does he have the touch? Can he get it to Rizzo? No, it's denied. Kate up, met by Jaina in midfield. Now, taking it in. Fairy Peak for Vitality. Met again and it's turned away. Boom downfield for G2. Kate up. Bad touch and Gale to get back to it. Scrub killer now. Booms it back downfield. Rizzo. Around the corner, Scrub Killer has the demo. Kate up around. Very big down. Very big scores! A stumble in season eight sent Rizzo and G2 down to the promotion playoffs, which they swept with ease to remind everyone that despite a bad season, they weren't going anywhere. And indeed, the team leveraged this momentum to win season nine's regional with an absolute blowout against prospective winners, Space Station Gaming. Held them to greatness in this series. They are styling on Space Station. All of them playing exceptionally well when it matters most. The season coming to an end and G2 and Rizzo clearing the path. As we do wind our last few seconds down, it is the ultimate redemption story for G2 Esports. They were in the promotion tournament. They've now won the playoffs. Your regional champions, G2 Esports. This would unfortunately prove to be the last major win of Rizzo's career, as the COVID-19 pandemic put a premature end to Season 9, snuffing out G2's momentum. Though the team fought valiantly through Season X's fall and winter splits, they only managed to win a handful of weeks of the grid overall. Rizzo later announced that he was retiring from competitive play a week after the North American Spring Split kicked off. The final event of his competitive career ended with G2 in a respectable third place finish, ensuring that the veteran player ended things on a high note. Now, if you've been following Rocket League for a minute, you know that Rizzo means a lot to the scene and the community overall, whether it be competitive or again content creation. It is sad to see him go, but we know that he's going to continue making sick content as we watch him ride off into the sunset of the competitive scene. He's going to be sticking around for sure, but I'm still going to shed a few more tears in his name. So go check out his channels. And speaking of, that's all the time we have for today. So I'd love if you go checked out all of our channels, of course. Check us out on Twitter, at Squad State, and check out our YouTube channel. That's all the time we have. So thank you so much for watching. And for a little overtime action, here is your weekly backfire.